What's happening, YouTube? Kenny back with another how to video coming to you straight from Quentin. And today, we're installing a DNA Racing Performance Radiator as long as a low profile fan. These are both the cheapest products I found online to do this replacement. If you watch my AC delete, you know that I deleted the AC fans. So we're only running one cooling fan right now. That's fine. The fan we got says performance. So if there's any sort of upgrade, that's going to be fine. I have no overheating problems at the moment. My radiator isn't cracked. I do have reason to believe it's rusted inside, being that all the fluid that came out is orange. Even though I recently just refilled it with green fluid not a problem we're gonna get this ugly black plastic radiator out and put in our new shiny chrome one with our very nice low profile fan so we're gonna go from this to this All right, let's talk about what the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need a ratchet, no more than a three inch extension and a 12 mil socket. You need a Phillips head screwdriver and some pliers. If you're also replacing the fan, some strong wire cutters, a tool that crimps and strips wires, some shrink wrap. If you don't have a shrink wrap, you can use electrical tape, two butt connectors. If you don't have butt connectors, you can use solder or anything you have to connect two wires. So let's get started with the uninstallation process. First and foremost, get your trusty Phillips head screwdriver. Locate your drain plug, otherwise known as a pickcock, I believe they call it. And go ahead and twist it out. Most of you guys OEM drain plug are going to be plastic. So make sure with the flathead you push in and turn. You do not want to strip this plastic drain plug. Remember if you want it to drain faster, make sure you take off the radiator cap. And the coolant will flow freely because the air bubbles are getting released to the top. After all your coolants drained out the car, we're going to start by taking off the reservoir hose. That just slips right out. Next, we're going to remove the fan wiring. If you had your AC, the outlet should be right there at the top. If not, you can disconnect it from the relay, which is right here. I only have the cooling fan, so my harness is right here. It's a pressure pull harness, so we press with our thumb. Comes right out. Next, we're going to remove the upper radiator hose. Go ahead and get some pliers, clamp them around the hose clamp, and push it down the hose. I don't think I need to say it, but I'm going to say just in case, make sure your car is cool. Cooling gets very hot and it will burn your skin. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and remove the upper radiator hose. And this is just by wiggling it out. There you go. I also want to say you don't need to jack up the car for this, but you will need to take off the splash guard underneath. Mine is already uninstalled. That's why you can see straight through. Let's continue. Next, we're going to remove the lower radiator hose, which is right there. You can see it. Right there, you can see a lower radiator hose connected to my radiator. All right, let's get to work on that lower radiator hose. Make sure you have your catch can underneath in case fluid still is leaking out. Uh, the hose clamp is seized on. So I'm just pinching the hose clamp and twisting out at the same time. Ah. All right, that sucks, but it's done. Okay, with all cables disconnected and all hoses disconnected, you'd be surprised to know that the only thing holding in your radiator is two 12 millimeter bolts, which are located on either side of the radiator with some rubber grommets in between them. I'm using a ratchet with a three inch extension, a 12 millimeter socket. And that fits perfectly in the bolt. All right, just before getting to the last bolt that's holding it in, what I like to do, I like to put the radiator hose back on. This is just slightly, and this is the event to save the radiator in case after loosening this bolt, it drops. All right, as you can see, that bolt came off with a few threads at the end and completely collapsed right there. I don't know if you can tell. What caught it was the radiator hose. Let's go. All right, time to pull out the radiator. Now it's being held on just by this hose, so make sure you get a firm grip. I'm gonna grab the inside of the fan because our fan is still bolted on. Wiggle off the radiator. And pull it straight on out. All right, next to salvage is what we're gonna use on the new radiator, which if you're not replacing the fan, you can go ahead and take off the old fan. They're just four 10 mil bolts, but I don't think any radiator come with, with these rubber washers. So that's what we're gonna take off. All you need is some pliers. There's a brass washer hub centric cap right here on top that can just get pulled right out. 
Looks just like that. That gives us enough flex. Go ahead and grab it with your pliers. Pull it straight up. Since we're using new fans, but we're using the same OEM harness, we're gonna need to cut this wire. We're gonna take it off the clips and we're gonna cut it just about there. That should be more than enough. All right, this is my DNA racing radiator and fan. This is everything that came with the fan and now we're gonna assemble it. Our fan has a bunch of mounting points all around it, but these four right here on the sides that I'm holding seem to be the strongest. That's why I feel most comfortable putting the mount clips. Came with four mounting clips. I'm putting them facing down and just push all of them into the grooves. There you go. If you got two fans, then put them next to each other, however which way you want to do it. This is how I'm doing it. If you can see right there, I lined it up with the middle fin. In between these two or 13 fins, I put on the seventh one. All right, after you have it exactly positioned how you want it, get a pencil and just stab each of the holes. You can use a paint marker. That might be a little bit better. But this is what I have. This is what I'm going to use. And so when we take it off, we can see exactly where it was supposed to go. Okay, we're going to get this foam padding. There's eight. We're going to use four squares on one side and four squares on the other. Okay, you can see right here, these foam paddings have a holes in the middle. Use your pencils to pop those out. All right, take the four squares and put them on each of the holes. All right, you can see our hole right there. Go ahead and peel off the adhesive. And right on top of that hole, you want to place that center hole and press it on. And make sure you do that to all of them. All right, now we need to put the foam pads in the back. But to tell exactly where it is, grab your zip tie and fit it through the hole and pull it through. Do that to all four. You just want to push them to the sticking out just a little bit. Then we're going to grab our foam pads and punch out the middles. Take off the adhesive and place it through the center of the hole. There you go. And do that to all four. Okay, now we're going to get the fan and place them on top of the holes. Okay, grab your springs and we're going to put them underneath in between the foam pad and the mounting clip. You just want to place a spring directly underneath it. The spring should find this little hole on the mounting clip and you want to do that to all of them. Okay, next grab your zip tie and go straight through all the holes. Go ahead and flip it over with the zip tie sticking out. Grab the ends and pull them all the way through. Alright, after all that done, we're going to put the caps on. Now keep in mind, when you put the caps on, you cannot take them off. The only way to take these off is to cut them. And you're going to have to get a new extra set. So try to do this right the first time and double check everything. Make sure it's all aligned exactly how you want it. Everything looks good, so I'm going to put it straight on. Go ahead and slip the cap over. After you got the caps on, go ahead and pull it all the way down. It's easier if you grab some pliers, hold the top, and push down. Don't worry, I'm making it too tight. Make sure you just do all of them, and then we're going to pull the spring to compress it just a little bit, and then tighten them down a little bit more. Do that to all four. Okay, remember when tightening, you don't want these springs fully compressed. You do want a little bit of a gap in between the fan and the radiator. You should be able to still push it and it bounce. I'm going to give each one about two more clicks each and that's perfect. Now go ahead and get some wire cutters. And I'm leaving about an inch, inch and a half left off each zip tie. Alright, next we're going to work on the wiring harness. I'm not going to use the ends that they provide, so I'm going to cut those off and strip the ends. Make sure you twist both of them. Next, put the butt connection through and crimp down one side. Give it a tug, make sure it's not coming out. Do the same thing to the other one. Now do the same thing to the end of the wire harness. Make sure you slide the shrink wrap through. Okay, and we're just going to match blue with blue and black and black. Make sure you guys are pushing the wire into the butt connector while you crimp or else the wire could potentially slide out. But once you got a good crimp, you can use two hands to get a real nice pinch. Make sure you give it a tug. That ain't going nowhere. 
All right, if you're using electrical tape, just go ahead and wrap it. If you have a shrink wrap, go ahead and slide it both through. Get your lighter. And shrink the wrap. And there you go, we got a beautiful connection and the smell of burning plastic. Last but not least, we gotta put in our bushing. Make sure you separate the washer and the bushing and this should just slip right on. Don't forget to put your washer on the back. Same thing to the other side. Ooh, look at my pre-rated, ready to go in. All right, let's do it. All right, let's just put it over here. Please don't mess up my nice new fins. I would not appreciate it. Okay. So we got the radiator down set. Unfortunately, there's nothing to hold it. So we're gonna have to let one side go. Grab the 12 that we took off. Find the hole. And hand tighten it in. Okay, with that side hand tying, we can let go of it. Now we're gonna help our 12 millimeter find his hole. There you go. We're just gonna hand tighten him in. Go ahead and grab your 12 and start tightening. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. Let's put in our upper radiator hose. And that can be done just by slipping it on. Just manhandle it a little bit. Slide right on. Grab some pliers. Pinch the nose clamp and move it in place. There you go. All right, time to put on that lower radiator hose. I put a new hose clamp. Okay, let's not forget our overflow tank hose. Goes right on there. Also, don't forget your fan connection. There you go. Lastly, let's top the radiator off with some coolant. Look how awesome this radiator looks. Oh my God, I love it. Love the low profile fan. Real nice chrome. Looks super clean right there. I'm happy with it. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.